Welcome to the creation story part four. Let's pick it back up in Genesis chapter one, verse 29. We've been covering uh, the days of creation. And so now we're kind of in the middle of God creating uh, man. And so in verse 29, um, it says, then God said, I give you every seed bearing plant on the face of the whole earth and every tree that has fruit with seed in it. They will be yours for food. Verse 30, and to all the beasts of the earth and all the birds in the sky and all the creatures that move along the ground, everything that has the breath of life in it, I give every green plant for food, and it was so. And so at this point, God is creating mankind in, on that sixth day of creation, and so we're made in the image of God, which is a super cool thing. We're also you know, commanded to uh, subdue the earth, be fruitful and increase in number, fill the earth and subdue it, and so... Now God is saying for food, we're going to eat plants. And so at this point, there's no death. And so that, you know, that includes the animals and that sort of thing. And so uh, no death at this point. Sin had not entered the world at this point. Uh, the world was not cursed, nothing like that. And so, uh, you know, at this point, then they they were just going to eat these, uh, these plants on this vegetation uh, to sustain themselves. And so there's no death yet. Uh, we kind of keep going then. Verse 31, God saw all that he had made. It was very good. And there was evening and there was morning the sixth day. And so it continues to be good stuff as God is saying. And then chapter two, we start and we see the seventh day, kind of bizarre. Thus the heavens and the earth were completed in all their vast array. By the seventh day, God had finished the work he had been doing. So on the seventh day, he rested from all his work. Then God blessed the seventh day and made it holy because on it, he rested from all the work of creating that he had done. And so now God, he could have just done six days of creation and just let it be there, right? But instead on the seventh day, he rests. And why does he rest? Well, God doesn't need rest, obviously, but what is he doing? He's setting an example for us. And so God definitely has this emphasis on this Sabbath, on this rest day, this kind of thing where we can kind of spend time with the Lord. There's definitely an emphasis on that because it not only makes it into creation and God goes ahead and does something that he doesn't even need to do to show us to do that, but he also listed in the Ten Commandments to remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. And so that's something that we obviously should take very seriously. And sometimes that can be kind of difficult to do, but that is something that God obviously placed an incredible emphasis on here that he would do that even in this creation story. And so I also think it's just so interesting that God would... Uh, create the world in seven days and uh, or six days if you take out the rest day, you know. And so he he does this. And I think it's so crazy because, you know, thinking about it for me personally, I'm thinking, well, I mean, it'd be more efficient to just snap your fingers and just make it happen all right at once, right? But instead he kind of sections it off, right? It's almost like he's savoring the moment to me. And sometimes I think of God as this kind of robotic, emotionless being, but, you know, God has joy, he enjoys things. I think he's enjoying this creation process and kind of savoring the moments here. And so that's kind of what God is doing. He's now taking this rest uh, time. And so then he goes into uh, then kind of more descriptive accounts of the creation of Adam. And we see that in verse, let's just go to verses uh, six and seven of chapter two. It says, but streams came up from the earth and watered the whole surface of the ground. Verse seven, this is the good one. Then the Lord God formed a man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And the man became a living being. And this is really, really fascinating stuff because God spoke the world into being, but he saved his very breath for us. And he went and formed us himself. And how much more personal is that than God speaking the light, you know, let there be light into being. Instead, he comes down and he he forms man from the dust of the ground and he like molds Adam and breathes into his nostrils the breath of life and the man became a living being. And I think just, man, how personal that is that God would come down and, and do that. And I think, man, you know, when you put that together with also being made in the image of God, there's a clear indication here of just how much God loves us. And I think that is just a really powerful thing to just kind of think about and meditate about, just thinking about God saved his very breath for us and came and formed us. And he spoke, you know, these other things into being. So 
let's pray. We'll close this out and uh, kind of continue in uh, Adam and Eve and that story in the Garden of Eden the next time. So let's pray. Lord God, I just thank you, Lord, that you just created us, that you breathed life into us, Lord God. And I just pray that you would help us to be able to have that sink in, whether it's just needing to sink in just to have a uh, that rest day like you took on that seventh day, or maybe it's just to have that sink in that you were created us in your image, that you breathed life into us, that you came down and, and formed us out of the dust of the, of the earth. Like, that is an amazing, amazing thing, how much you love us. And so just help us, Lord, to have that kind of sink in today. We thank you in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.